Hi, if you're new, welcome to my channel and my videos are all about making lucrative investments from anywhere in the world. And today I'm not going to be diving into the stock market. I'm going to show you an entirely different asset class. So something very cool that we're going to do is we're going to try to invest in music. You're probably thinking, how is that even possible? And well, we're actually going to be looking at the royalties behind music. So a royalty is the payment made to the owner of a license for using that asset. The asset can be actually many things, but today we're specifically going to be talking about music as the asset. But another type of asset could be uh, a patent on an invention or a trademark or using someone's logo or even oil. Royalty payments are generally just a percentage of the revenue that is generated from the asset. So let me give you an example. Michael Jackson produced the song Thriller in 1982. It was very popular and it was played on the TV, on the radio and records were sold. Now because the TV, the radio and the record companies used Michael Jackson's music, then they shared the profits with Michael Jackson. For years and years, every time Thriller was played on either the TV or the radio, Michael Jackson's record label would be collecting some of that revenue. And as a musician, this will be his primary source of income. Michael Jackson has died, but his royalties continue to be paid to whomever owns the royalty. And in this case, it's his family. So even today in 2020, when Thriller is played, Michael Jackson's family receives money. And remember, he recorded this song in 1982. So that is a long, long time for him to be making money off a song that he produced just once in a recording studio. So whoever owns that royalty has a really strong passive income stream that can last for many, many years. But the Jackson family actually doesn't receive the entire amount of that royalty check. The song was actually written by a guy called Rod Temperton and he actually received some of that royalty as well. And Rod also gets an agency to collect his share of the royalty check. Now it starts to get a little bit complicated with all the different types of royalties around music. It's actually not that important to understand exactly how this works, but I'll just give you a little bit of background information. So firstly, there is performance royalties, which means when a song is played on the radio or in a cafe or in a sports stadium. Then there's mechanical royalties. Think like CDs, vinyls, or when streamed on like Spotify or YouTube. And by the way, this is why if anyone plays music on YouTube, all the money actually goes to the owner of the mechanical royalties, not the person who actually made the video. Just FYI. And recording copyrights. This is when a movie, TV show, or an advertisement plays the song. Now, generally the songwriter gets around about 10% and the performer gets about 60% and the rest goes to the agency. Now, of course, depending on how popular the music actually is, will determine how much money the, uh, the owners of the royalty receive. So track 15 from some obscure Christian rock band from the 1990s isn't gonna receive anywhere near as much as Michael Jackson's Thriller. There are two big benefits of owning a royalty. It is an uncorrelated asset which means that other industries don't really affect a royalty payment. People listen to music when the stock market is crashing. People listen to music when an illness makes everyone stay at home. So if the housing market collapsed and the stock market went to zero, well, the royalty payment would still keep rolling in. As long as people still like music, royalties will be valuable. It's very passive. Music royalties is one of the most passive incomes out there. You can be sick for three months and your royalty payments will just keep coming to you. You seriously don't have to do anything. So I can't sing. I can't write music and I'm pretty sure I can't invent anything. So how is it possible that I could ever own a royalty? Well, 10 years ago, it actually would have been very difficult. You would have had to know of an artist who was selling their royalties or even just was interested in selling their royalties and then you'd have to negotiate with them directly. But recently there's been a marketplace set up to help regular people like you and me to buy royalties of artists, whether it's the full royalty rights or whether it's just even a part of the royalty. I don't know the exact reasons why someone would want to sell a royalty, but just like any asset, everyone has their own reasons. Maybe they're going through a divorce and they need to sell some assets, or maybe they want to sell something to buy a private jet. Regardless, we can now buy royalties if we think it's a good investment. To do this, we use a major exchange in the space called Royalty Exchange. You guys already knew that because of the title of my video. Royalty Exchange is the platform that I would recommend to find a royalty. And let's just dive in and have a quick look at it now. Okay, so we're at the Royalty Exchange website. I'm just gonna quickly sign in. Now, the first thing we're gonna see is the auction house, which comes up first, and then the secondary market, which we'll look at in a moment. But first, the auction house. So this auction is gonna finish in two days for this one here, so I'm just going to click on that, just as an example. Now, the first thing that we would need to see is the term, and it says life of rights. And that means when we buy this, we get it forever, which is great. That's exactly what we're looking for in an investment. We can have it for as long as forever. We can hand it to our children forever. So. At the moment, it's worth $125,000. They're saying that at this price, 19% is around about your return on investment. Um, around about. Now, I'll explain how that's not exact in a moment. 
There's two days left. There's been three bids on this, this listing so far. Now you're probably wondering, what even is this? It just says hip hop. But if I go down a little bit further, I can see what the track list is. And now here in the track list are all the songs you're buying the royalties for, all of them. And there's like, there's hundreds of them here. So you're buying this big collection of hip hop songs. So that's that's a bit interesting. It's not a one individual song, it's you know, it's a whole collection. And it tells here that it says here that the um the last 12 months of royalty has been over twenty six thousand dollars for one year. So that's pretty high. The royalties that you get are the musical composition. So this is from the writers of the song, not from the artist. So that's what the musical composition side is kind of telling us. And we can we can keep this is just information about the the types of songs that are on there and what's you know what's good in the in the listings. So we're going to go over to the financial section now. And if I go to the top, it gives us this nice chart here that shows that it's slightly in a downward trend. Now that's not a great sign if we wanted to hold this for fifty years or whatever, because it's slowly going to probably go down to nearly nothing if it's gonna continue this trend. So we have to factor that into when we decide how much it's actually worth. So the other things here, it just gives us a breakdown of the royalty sources, uh, the most popular songs in the listing. And as we can see here, there's actually one song makes up 60% of this entire royalty. So that's uh, quite a large percentage. And it gives us a little bit more information. And then what I wanted to get to is this, what's called the theoretical cash flow, which just shows us that what we could be expected over the next nine years to be making. And this 10th year is actually just a sum of all these previous nine years. So this is what we could theoretically be getting. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the secondary market and take a look what's in there. So the secondary market is quite interesting. Now this is where people have already paid for a royalty before, they've already bought it from somebody and they're trying to resell it again uh, for whatever reason. So there's lots of listings here. Uh, I'm just gonna click on a random one here. Um, which one, this one's been random, recently added. Here we go, this one. Okay, so this asset is uh, made up of, well, it's made up of 20 tracks, as you can see here. Uh, the last 12 months earnings is nearly $2,000. And it says the last, here's, this is what's interesting. The last transaction price was $7,748. So someone has already bought this listing for 7,748 and they're trying to sell it again. Now, something that uh, we need to really check on is this years remaining, right here, years remaining, 9.75. In 9.75 years, you're not going to own this asset anymore. It's gonna go back to the, the, the original royalty owner and you're not gonna have it anymore. So this is a bit of a, a, a red flag that we really, I really wanna avoid because I don't wanna buy something that is only gonna last nine years. I want something that's gonna last for the rest of my life. So that's something to look out for. Obviously this listing is gonna be a lot cheaper because you're only gonna get it for the nine years, but just be aware of that if you're looking at you're looking at these investments. Okay, now let me show you something that I really do like. And if I go to the listings and I go to the auction house again, there's something that's pretty interesting is this Slipknot royalty right here. So I'm gonna go into the Slipknot royalty. I think this one would be a really good investment. If I had the kind of money just lying around, I would probably want to buy this. Now, I don't have this type of money lying around because it's over $750,000 for a 30 year royalty. So that's really, obviously that's way out of my range, but I like this one a lot because it's in a niche field and there's got very, they got very, very hardcore fans. This music hasn't aged at all. And if you're into heavy metal or into Slipknot, it's, it might not ever age it, it might just keep going forever. So let's take a quick look at the financials. And it says, as you can see, the last two and a half years, it's been growing. Uh, each of the half year periods, it's been growing. So this is a really good sign as well. Now, if we keep scrolling down, you'll see that we actually get only five songs in this listing. So compared to the last one where we had hundreds of songs, this one's only five. And if I go to the media tab, I can quickly have a look on YouTube, uh, the actual songs themselves. So I'm not gonna play those now, but as you can see, you can just have a look through the things that you might be buying. There's actually a track here from Simple Plan, which is obviously not Slipknot. Uh, they've thrown this into the royalty as just like an added bonus. So I don't know really why they did that, but it's part of the royalty that you'll get as well. So Slipknot, it's popular in a specific niche, which I think is ideal as an investment. True Slipknot fans will always be Slipknot fans. Not like pop music where tastes change, this is really specific. My rough opinion on what it is worth is I think I would add up all the theoretical cash flow for the nine years. 
which I find down here. So I think it's worth a, probably a little over $1 million. That's about 10 to 13% return on investment. And that's what I'd want to be making with my money in other investments. And this is an uncorrelated asset to my other investments. So I would love to buy it, but I can't. If this video is even slightly interesting, can you please hit the like button right now? Otherwise, I have no idea if this is even a good topic or not. It would be pretty cool if you could play a song at a party from either Tupac or Michael Jackson or Slipknot or whichever artist and tell everybody at the party that you're getting paid right now to listen to this song. That's just the attraction to the asset and you just got to be really careful not to be overvaluing it. Something I haven't fully understood yet is how much emphasis and importance should I be placing on a well-known famous artist over a completely unknown artist? For example, a Latin American artist who sings in Spanish, which I've never heard of before, might have really strong longevity in that particular niche. And just because I haven't heard of the music before, it actually might be a really, really good investment. And there might be less competition from other people wanting to buy that royalty because they haven't heard of that song either. Therefore, I might be able to get a bargain and it might be actually a really good investment because of that. Now, this is just a theory. It's a very new asset class and I'm very new to this market. So I am still trying to work it all out, but I think it's just a really cool asset to be owning because it's uncorrelated and it's very passive and it diversifies my current investment portfolio very nicely. But like anything, I'm happy to be very patient to wait for the right royalty to come along that I think is a worthwhile investment. I really hope you enjoyed learning about a totally different asset class today. Please leave a comment if you have any questions at all and I'll be sure to answer them. And I'll see you in the next video.